All right. Well, welcome everybody. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, Brian, is it on? Brian Parrott, are we live? Okay. Let's go ahead and hit it. Um, we are live streaming Facebook tonight. And uh, so welcome everybody. If you're online watching, I hope you can hear us well. Uh, let us know if you can't hear the sound. We've got a different phone, a different microphone. And so we think we're, we think we're golden. So uh, how about them chiefs? Whoop, whoop. All right. So, uh, are we going to have another Super Bowl party? Yeah, it is. You can't hear it? You could hear it earlier. I can hear myself on Facebook. Chris Cohen says he can hear it. Okay. Or now, so now we don't have sound in the sanctuary. <laughs> Facebook has got sound, but uh, anyway, we'll all just talk for a little bit. Hopefully, these, these guys get it figured out. Uh, it is. It says it is. So uh, tonight's a special night. We've got uh, one visitor, Dave, and uh, so let's welcome Dave. Let's give him love there. So, uh, and Travis is back. So good to see you, young man. <clears throat> and uh don't know if anybody else is new or relatively new. But anyway, this is uh, Life Issues. This is our faith-based addiction recovery program. We're an outreach of Heartland Baptist Fellowship, but uh, we're uh, non-denominational, so there's people here goes to other churches, and some don't go uh, to church yet, maybe. So anyway, everyone's welcome is my point. And so uh, tonight's special because it's the last Friday of the month, and the last Friday of the month, uh, we don't have small group. Typically, we would have a one-hour, 45-minute large group time, and then we would have some snacks and go to small group, ladies with ladies and men with men. Uh, but tonight, we're going to forego that because we've got a testimony. So tonight is a testimony night, and uh, afterwards, we're going to go to Mazio's. The, the whole group's going to Mazio's. So uh, I know you didn't plan for that, uh, Dave, but... Uh, next month, maybe you can plan on it. We do this every month, so the last Friday of every month. <clears throat> so, just a couple of announcements before we get started. The, uh, the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl, of course, and uh, we're going to have a little get-together. So, we're going back to our roots. Uh, right to my left, about 30 feet, is a double-wide trailer. And there's a TV in there, so we're all going to watch the Super Bowl together uh, Sunday. I don't. I should. We should probably need to get a flyer going, don't we, Jim? Oh, you did, didn't you? And I didn't make printouts, so we still got one more Friday before the Super Bowl. But anyway, uh, we'll we'll plan on uh, getting together by five, as I always said. Because the Super Bowl is 5:30 or 5:40 or something. <clears throat> yeah, next week we have to sign also. Okay. I'm trying to think. Did we provide chili and burgers or something, and and then people are bringing side dishes? Okay. So life e <clears throat> life issues will provide uh, chili and a cake. <clears throat> Because more important than the Super Bowl is next, uh, that'll be our 10-year anniversary of life issues. So maybe not more important than the Super Bowl, but to me probably. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Brian. <laughs> no, we're having, well, that'll be part of the sign-up. Uh, life issues will provide the chili and the cake, and we'll have other stuff sign up. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, uh, our church last year helped at the Shepherd Staff Food Pantry 
three different Fridays of the year. So there's kind of a schedule rotation of different uh, volunteer groups. And this year we're going to have, we've got six dates. So there's six different dates throughout this year that we're going to help with the Shepherd Staff Food Pan. Have any, has anybody ever helped with that? So almost half of us. So it it is an all-out uh, physical workout, isn't it? I mean, if you don't sweat, you're not doing it right. <laughs> Cause, uh, so anyway, we have like a three-hour time slot. So my point is, next Friday, the 5th, so before you come to Life Issues, uh, Bobby could use some help. And I don't think I can be there this this week. So uh, I think it's 12.30 to 3 or 4, or something like that. Bobby Blaine, she's got the walker, so she can't do a lot herself. Yep. If you can just tell Bobby you're coming, I think Pam is on the team and Chuck helps with it. So typically, it was just me and Chuck last time, and, uh, you know, Bobby can't do a lot. So anyway, they could use our help. And uh, so the first of six dates this year is next Friday. And if you'll say something to Bobby, she would know the times better than me. And I don't see Hannah tonight, but Hannah, if you want to give her a pat on the back when you see her, she is celebrating one year sobriety uh, I think that was yesterday yeah so Hannah if you're online uh, good good job Hannah so that that's sweet I uh, that's she started before we uh, met her I think because she's only be coming here six months or so but anyway we're real proud of Hannah and she's about to finish uh, discipleship we have a one-on-one -on -one a discipleship program and she's working with her neighbor who's one of our members and uh, so she's almost through with discipleship now uh, I know everybody's super busy but after 29 years uh, my wife and I are moving we're moving two miles so we're moving two miles away <laughs> but we're moving from a 50 year old house to a one year old house and it's ranch so we don't have all the stairs so uh, that's good for us. I'll say me, an old, old person. Angie's not as old as I am. but So anyway, we, we are going to be moving next Saturday, a week from tomorrow. If anybody wants to help, we'll probably from like 1 in the afternoon. Saturday. What? Super Bowl Saturday. It's the day before the Super Bowl. Super Saturday. Okay. <laughs> Is there something going on that day? Well, okay. <laughs> So there's no football game, though. <laughs> Man, okay. So if anybody wants to help, one to five, and I will give you our address upon request. What? Well, we're going to have a truck, and hopefully we have more than two men. Okay. Um, I think that was all. We'll, we'll have some... Uh, some prayer requests at this time, and uh, I'm going to read an article here in just a minute, but go ahead, Rich. Uh, you had a prayer? Amen. S send me a picture of that. That's take a picture of your coin. And I'd like to see that. I we we have yet to create our coins. We we are thinking through the date or the increments that we want, and that I'm just kind of sitting on that. So that's my fault. But we are going to have some. Yeah, Sarah. That sounds kind of dire, yeah. Yeah. And then um, Drake really needs a 
lot of prayers. He, he lost his grandmother last weekend. Right. Uh, so yeah. Okay. I see him here tonight. That's good. Dottie, do you have something? Uh, yeah, I went to my cardiologist Wednesday, and I'm having some minor problems, so they're going to do a bunch of tests on the 18th of February to okay. see if I have a clogged artery or anything like that. Sure, Dottie. We'll pray for your upcoming visit with the doctor. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Teresa. Ah. Uh, well, no, it was out of state. I thought she lived out of state. It is Arkansas, I think. Is that what you said? Yeah, something like that. But I know they're on the road. All right. And we need traveling mercies for them. All right. Sarah, you've you've already got you've maxed out. <laughs> okay, okay. This isn't a, a prayer request, but a praise or you know an announcement. Alicia um, at the Lily's house is she's going to be having her baby. Yeah, I knew she was due in February. Is she watching tonight, you think? Um, I don't know. They've been trying. I know they have. Yeah, I know they have too. We have technical difficulties, but we're we're 100% tonight. So, Melissa's on. Well, but she's probably not at the Lily House. Okay, well, well let me, uh, before we do our pledge and uh, pray for these things, I just read an article this week about uh, drug overdoses, and th- this article is about Alabama, but it, it mentioned some nationwide statistics, and it was kind of insightful to me, and uh, there's a little part at the end that I thought was was uh, good. So let, let me just read this to you, because, uh, you know, we're, we're just kind of here in this little town, in this big state, in this big country, and... Uh, might help us see outside our own borders a little bit. <clears throat> and, of course, like the rest... There we go. There's some sound. Like the rest of the country, uh, the, na- the nation hit an all-time high for drug-related deaths, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in 2020. Uh, nationwide, 81,230 people died from drug overdoses between June of 2019 and the end of May 2020. So for a, a one-year period, nationwide, 81,230. Uh, that's the largest number ever recorded for any 12-month span, according to the CDC Health Advisory and a, a substantial increase over the 12 months that came before. But the highest increase occurred between March and May of 2020 during the initial lockdown of the pandemic. It said at least 20% more people died in Alabama from do- drug overdoses during the most recent uh, 12-month period than during the previous 12-month period. <clears throat> And uh, I'm not going to read all this, but it says uh, opioids, including heroin and its potential, <clears throat> it, its potent cousin fentanyl, caused the majority of the Jefferson County deaths. <clears throat> that's, that's where Birmingham's at. And then it said in Huntsville in North Alabama, Madison County Coroner uh, Tyler Berryhill said the number of deadly drug overdoses increased sharply at the beginning of the pandemic. His office handled an average of one overdose death every one and a half days, up from the usual pace of every five days. He says, we're dealing with a lot of things we've never seen. There was a pandemic, stimulus checks, and I didn't think about that, but people getting stimulus checks maybe don't always use that money for good. And of course, the lockdown. And uh, then there's a lady uh, from Birmingham said the, the pandemic disruptions to the drug supply caused an increase in substances tainted with fentanyl, she said. Users who thought they were buying heroin, Xanax, or other drugs often ended up with more potent products that caused overdoses. New drugs also appeared as supplies of heroin faded. The chemists who, were, who are creating these creative 
these are creative, so they are straddling, uh, yeah, straddling the drugs that are on the schedule. Um, I'm not sure quite what some of that means, but uh, it says in Madison County, most of the overdose deaths involve people who used methamphetamine and fentanyl together, Barry Hill said. The number of deaths dropped in the last half of 2020. He said bad batches of extra strong drugs probably caused many of the deaths, but the, t but the pandemic also caused stress for many people. Madison County uses the state toxicology lab in Hoover to process drug tests. Barry Hill said that the wait for results increased substantially, resulting from three to four months to closer to six months. So the county may not know how many people died from drug overdoses in 2020 until late spring or early summer. <clears throat> the increase in drug overdose deaths started in 2019, but accelerated through COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to di disrupting the heroin supply, the pandemic also reduced access to treatment and overdose re reversal drugs. Uh, on down here it says deaths linked to cocaine and methamphetamines have also been rising across the nation. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> stimulants don't account for a large number of overdo overdoses, deaths in Jefferson County, but some people have overdosed on fentanyl and methamphetamine. Even if someone is not a known op opioid user, it is unpredictable what they are getting right now. <clears throat> Jefferson and Mobile counties received grants last year to improve surveillance of drug overdoses. The Jefferson County Department of Health receives information and drug-related deaths, emergency department visits, and calls for medical assistance that allows it to pinpoint hot spots. <clears throat> this guy says uh, uh, can, can bring training programs and recovery resources to neighborhoods hit hardest by drug overdoses. And then I thought this was good. On Saturday, the department offered free, uh, somebody help me say this, nal naloxone. Naloxone. The, the, uh, you can give it to somebody. If, that's what you yeah. gave, that's what we have, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> so they offered free uh, naloxone kits and training at the 6th Avenue Baptist Church in Birmingham. And so... Here we're a little Baptist church trying to help the addicted, and there's a little church, uh, Sixth Avenue Baptist Church in Birmingham, that are also trying to help the addicted. And uh, naloxone can reverse drug overdoses. People can also complete an online naloxone program. The department has partnerships with pharmaceutics that can provide uh, naloxone to people who completed the program. The reversal drug is available by mail order also. So anyway, that's just a little bit of a reminder of, of, of what, what we're doing, what we're up against, and uh, some increases in our, our country through the, uh, through the COVID. But let's, uh, Dale, can you go ahead and put up our pledge to the Bible? And we're going to stand at this time, and we're going to say our pledge to the Bible, and we'll pray, pray over the things that were mentioned earlier. And uh, we, we were hoping to have uh, J.J. and Ed were going to sing tonight, but they had not got a chance to uh, practice because I think uh, Ed had been exposed to uh, COVID. And so uh, anyway, we're going to have a song. And so uh, but we'll just uh, say our pledge and then uh, I'll have uh, Jason come up and uh, page after we pray. So let's uh, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Let's remain standing for a minute. Uh, Heavenly Father, we <clears throat> do pledge our allegiance to your, your uh, holy Bible. We thank you for it. We know uh, men and women through the centuries have sacrificed much so that we can have and hold this uh, Bible and Lord, we just know how relevant it is to uh, our walk today as it was uh, when these holy men of God uh, spoke and wrote it down. And So Lord, uh, <clears throat> we just want to enter your gates with thanksgiving tonight for the beautiful day and just the break in the weather and the sunshine. And Lord, uh, thank you that we can meet in peace tonight. We thank you for this uh, church that allows us to meet here. And 
uh, just talk about our struggles, our issues, these, these issues of life that were uh, it's common to uh, all of us. So, uh, Father, we pray you'll meet with us tonight, and we want to uh, intercede uh, on behalf of uh, Sarah and her, her grandma is sick, and maybe on her deathbed we, she, she's having trouble swallowing, and so we just lift her up, pray that your Holy Spirit will comfort her. I pray you use Sarah and others uh, in her life to uh, speak words of truth to her and uh, minister to her at this time, and just lift up uh, little Drake as he's just lost a, a different grandma, and I pray for him to uh, just uh, understand his own mortality and just deal with these things as, as such a young man. And Father, we uh, want to uh, pray for Alicia. I'm not sure if she's watching tonight, but we pray that she will have a safe uh, childbirth and that uh, her and her baby will just uh, be healthy and strong and be uh, minimal issues. Father, we just uh, pray for her in advance this next week or two as she gives birth. And we want to praise you for uh, the life of that unborn. And Father, we want to intercede for uh, Dottie as she's going to have some uh, doctor look at her heart coming up here on February 18th. We pray that that visit will be, uh, they'll be able to diagnose her properly and, and treat her. And uh, Father, we lift up uh, Rosie and Jimmy as they're traveling to see uh, his mom, I think it was, and so just be with them along the highways and byways and get him there and back safely. And Father, we want to praise you for, uh, you know, Hannah's successful year of sobriety. We pray it'll just be the first of many years for that young lady. And thank you for Rich and his sobriety of 18 months. And uh, just uh, thank you for his family that have been so supportive and this church and people that love him and Travis and Natalie, and so we just lift up them to you and uh, pray your blessing on them and pray for uh, Jason and Paige now as they're going to share what you've done in their life. I pray it'll just uh, <clears throat> help us to understand uh, everything that's said and just be able to apply to our heart what you've done in their lives. And we just thank you for the McGuire family and their children their home. And so uh, bless them as they speak. I pray uh, you give us a good night in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> and uh, one thing I failed to mention that some of you already know, tomorrow is my birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. And uh, I will be 60, believe it or not. And so uh, my, that, that's partly why my daughter's here uh, to kind of help celebrate tomorrow. Uh, but at Mazio's, we're going to have a cake. So we have a cake there. And I don't know anything else going on, but I know that, so I thought I'd share it. But all right, well, Jason, uh, Paige, come on up here. Let's give them some love, too. <clears throat> and uh, whoever's talking, if you can have, this is the live Facebook. So you need okay. two mics. I don't know about all that. You're a double mic. And this is Jason. This is Paige. So whatever you, you, should come, you should come over here. No, that's all right. Come on. So, whoa, that's hot. <laughs> that's really loud. Um, oh, you weren't you weren't talking about me. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. So, uh, as a lot of you guys know me, uh, my name's uh, Jason. This is my wife, Paige. We've been around HBF for um, quite a while now. Um, uh, I kind of want to. I want to go into this backwards. Uh, a lot of times, people start uh, back at the beginning of the story, and uh, instead, I would rather uh, kind of show you where we're at now, and then I want to uh, circle back around. And um, you know, a lot of times when somebody gives a testimony, um, and, and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, maybe in D two, I can't remember, but um, we like to give a lot of glory to our past sin, right? We like to uh, go back and just really reminisce on the things that we did that we shouldn't have done. And, uh, and, and that's okay uh, as a new believer. But as you grow in Christ, um, there should be a lot more to be said about what Christ has done since then, right? And so uh, we will go back and um, Paige and I have a uh, a fairly decent story, uh, I think, from uh, years ago. But um, God has done a, a lot in our lives. Um, uh, I'm the uh, the young adult pastor here at HBF. Um, I still don't know uh, why they think they should trust me with that, but you know, I just I just go with it. And so um, 
we just uh, we we really love God's word. We really love to serve the Lord, and um, just uh, whatever God has called us to do, asked us to do, we're just like on board with it. And so um, that's kind of where we're at. I, I've always kind of lived by the verse, you know. Faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it, right? And so uh, the way I look at it is if God has called me to do it, um, then it's on him, right? And so it really has nothing to do with me, which is uh, the exact opposite of how I am, right? I'm a hands-on. Uh, I want to be in control of what's going on. I want to be able to control the outcome of what's going to happen. Um, and so I, that's just the, the type of person that I am. And so uh, to put the faith in Christ with no matter what you're doing in life, um, it really, uh, it takes simple faith, right? And so, um, so that's where we're at now, right? Um, in ministry all the time, you know, um, but it didn't always start that way. And so when I think of, and, and maybe you're the same way, maybe you're not, but when I think of somebody who should be uh, the stereotypical uh, pastor, somebody who's teaching a class or, or whatever. I think of somebody, and I'm not just saying this because uh, we're at Life Issue, I think of somebody like Steve Fleshman, right? Somebody who uh, grew up in a, a Christian home. Um, I think of uh, even your son Luke, right? Somebody who's, who's grown up in it, um, who's kind of always been immersed in it, and they've always really just given their life um, the best they could uh, to the Lord throughout time. And uh, I love Steve's testimony about the fact that, you know, he's never... Uh, Really, he's the opposite of who you would think would be leading an addiction recovery ministry, but yet he's he's doing exactly what God called him to do, um, and and that's the kind of person that I think of when I think of somebody who um, should be uh, uh, entrusted with teaching God's word. It terrifies me uh, at, at times to the the weight that comes with that, but. I'm the opposite of that, right? I, I, I did not uh, come from a Christian background at all. Um, I did not grow up in a Christian home. Uh, you know, we did what we wanted to do all the time. Um, you know, I'm, I don't want to give you too much backstory of, of childhood, but, you know, things were, it was anything went, you know, whenever you wanted. And that's just kind of the way it was. And uh, I don't blame my parents for that. I think, I think they did the best that they could. And, you know, I knew right from wrong, but uh, I just figured if I didn't get caught, it wasn't that big of a deal, right? And so I'm sure everybody's uh, been in that boat. And uh, I always figured that, and, you know, even throughout my life, if I get in trouble, I'll I'll just work my way out of it, right? It's no big deal. Um, You know, it wasn't wasn't a big deal to me uh, to get a speeding ticket as a 16-year-old boy going 110 on 71 Highway in my mom's minivan because it was like, I'll just, you know, work and pay for it. It's not that big of a deal to me. My mom, on the other hand, was, you know, I think of I think of it now. I have a 16 year old son, 17 year old son. It's a little different, but uh, <laughs> we all have that mindset though that we can just you know if we do something we shouldn't, it's okay. I'll just I'll work my way out of it, um, and that's kind of always been the way that that I uh, was raised. Right, I, I was raised to work hard. Um, I can I can do not. I can do a lot of things, right? I'm a carpenter by trade, but I mean, we, I mean, you just grow up on the farm. You, you can fix anything on the fly because that's what you got to do, right? And so, uh, in high school, uh, I met, uh, this girl. Uh, I, there'd been other girls before, but I met this girl, right? And so I blame her for all the problems that came afterwards, but, um, praise the Lord, she's still with me today. Uh, I was, I mean, like I said, we did whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. There was no godly godliness in me whatsoever. Uh, her, on the other hand, was a little bit different. Her family did go to church. They went to the Kansas City Baptist Temple, um, which is kind of ironic that we ended up here um, years later uh, as a church from there. But um, so, uh, obviously, uh, fornication, you know, all the things that you wanted to do as a teenage boy, uh, Paige, uh, very soon afterwards, uh, got pregnant. How old were you? I was... I was... Huh? Uh, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> Do I even need this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it, um, I was 16. I, we were, I was 17 yeah. whenever we had Yeah, him. so she was 16. I was 16 or 17. And um, again, it, it was, you know, it was a shock. Like, oh, now what? Um, but... I, f- I fell back into my default of, well, it's not really that big of a deal. I'll just work for it. I'll just work my way out of it. It's not that big of a deal. I knew one thing uh, immediately when this, when this kind of came about was uh, I didn't want anything to change, 
Like the last thing I wanted was for her to somehow, uh, you know, get all godly on me because the last thing I needed was any kind of church in my life. And I was very vocal that I needed none of that. Um, but I did not want her to all of a sudden think that things needed to change. Right. Uh, I was I was fine with sticking around. Uh, I was totally uh, uh, what I thought was in love with this girl. Uh, what do you know at, at that age? But, uh, you know, I would just go to work. It was not that big of a deal. Uh, her, on the other hand, it was a little more uh, of a shocker. Um, not that it, like, terrified her either. But so, you know, and if at any point you want to say anything, you can stop me. But, you know. So I did grow up in and out of church my whole life, more in than out. Um, we had a couple church transitions as I was growing up. But I grew up in a Christian family. Um, my dad grew up in a Christian family, so I grew up amongst generational Christians, um, or, you know, that's how it was, that's how you would say it, that's how it was presented, but as I've grown in the Lord and learned the Word of God, um, I've realized that I do have some really strong, godly family members, but for the most part, I grew up in a very moral family that um, played church, and so everything for me growing up was all about your reputation. Um, it's how you appear when we're outside of our home. Um, that was what was important. And of course you went to church on Sunday because that's what you do to look good. Um, so for me to get pregnant at 16 was a bit of an issue for my good looking family. So it wasn't, you know, he was like, I wasn't afraid of raising a baby. Um, I grew up with babies. I was excited about that. The only thing I ever really wanted to be was a mom. Um, so that wasn't an issue for me. But the, the appearance of it and the, um, the finding out of our sin at that time, which we were lost. Um, I thought I was saved. I was not saved. I was very lost. And um, so I really didn't care about that. That was just, I, we were going to do whatever we wanted to do. What? Oh, he said the handheld's good now. So, when I met her, uh, obviously her family wanted me to go to church with her. So I would, I would go to church on Sunday mornings, and I do. Uh, I, I want to say this: I don't, I don't want to play up any church, right? Um, the church is a building, right? And so, if, if God's not at work, it's just a building. Um, and so, it was just simply. Uh, a way to appease uh, people. I had no need, and I was very vocal about it, I had no need for a God in my life because I, there was no need for it, right? I, I could do anything that I wanted to do. I could be anything I wanted to be. I knew if I worked hard enough, I could make enough money. And it was just, that's how I was, that's how I was, right? And it was a sense of, uh, really, it was an issue of pride that I had no need for anything other than myself. Um, and so I had it all figured out, right? Because that's what everybody does when they're 17, 18 years old. You've got the world completely uh, figured out. And so uh, I just assumed that, what? I, I just assumed that, you know, we would just uh, go on about our way, right? Um, I, I worked hard and I played hard uh, all the time. And so you can just assume what that means, right? You know, I never uh, was big into uh, drugs, uh, unless you consider alcohol a drug, because I didn't like to consume it all the time, but when I did, it was a lot, right? And so uh, there was, it, was, it was drinking for an effect, and that's all that it was all the time. And so, um, so she gets pregnant, um, and she has uh, our son, right? And so, you know, obviously not uh, the background you would think of, uh, of where we're at now. So she has uh, Brian, our, our oldest son now, um, which was 17 years ago, which is crazy, but <laughs> I'm only 18. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he, he's the one. He's one of the ones that are up here strumming yeah. guitar on Sundays. And um, so uh, we we go on about life. Uh, we uh, we get an apartment because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be a big kid now. We get an apartment, and uh, you know you get a job. Uh, I, I was working, uh, so. Uh, I basically, uh, I didn't drop out of high school. I had enough credits. I graduated high school early, um, and so I immediately left. I went and got a full-time job because I wanted to be responsible, right? I wanted to, uh, if nothing else, I wanted to have the appearance of doing the right thing. If I decided later on that it wasn't going to work with Paige and I, it just, I wasn't going to be that guy who left because she got pregnant. And so uh, she, has, uh, she has Brian. Uh, I think things, and when I say I think things, um, I like to make things appear in my mind that I've got them under control, right? Uh, no matter what, I've got this. Just 
just ask. And so uh, I had a, a, the appearance of this was this was working out fine, right? And so I'm I'm chasing uh, I'm chasing a dollar bill because that's what I was uh, raised to do, right? Go to work, work hard, uh, so I can come home and go to the lake and play hard. Um, that was the life that I lived, and uh, I just assumed that my wife was uh, completely on board for these things. And I don't want to tell you that I was completely moral in anything that I did. Nothing that I did was moral. Um, I just, the one thing I did know was that I had uh, what, we got married soon after, right? It wasn't immediately after because I didn't want somebody to tell me I had to get married. So uh, I, I had to do it on my terms. So as I told everybody there was absolutely no way that was going to happen. And as soon as I told everybody no, then we did it our way, right? Because uh, that's just, that was the pride that was in me. I had to have it my way no matter what. And so uh, we got married. Uh, soon after we had Brian, we, we get the apartment. Um, I think things are going well because, you know, that's the picture that I had in my mind. Um, but things were not going well, right? And so um, marriage is more than a piece of paper. Um, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that. Um, and so I think that my wife is uh, just madly uh, in love with me because, right, who wouldn't want to just be madly in love with me? And so, like, I just assume that things are going great. Um, and very soon uh, after living in the apartment and, and like, things were, things were not so good, right? Um, you know, if you, I don't know if you've ever heard this, and there, if you've got red hair, I'm sure it's not really true, but it was for my wife, right? There was some mean, there was some anger that came with the red hair, I'm telling you, right? And so uh, the woman that you know now is nothing like uh, the page of old. And so she was mean, uh, not just not just verbally, but like physically. And the thing was, she wasn't stronger than me. So there would be times and it would just be like, I would just have to like hold her. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> So, so marriage wasn't uh, as awesome as uh, it was portrayed uh, to be, but I knew that I wasn't going to get divorced because my wife was going to leave me. If I was going to get divorced, it was going to be because I wanted it to happen, and I didn't want it to happen yet. So, uh, <laughs> telling you, it was all pride. And so, uh, things were not, uh, they were not good. Um, so, soon afterwards, and you can kind of circle back around and fill in some of your side of this, but... Soon after, things are really, really not good, right? Um, when, I, when I tell you not good in a marriage, I mean, like, uh, if it was talking, it was because we were yelling, and it was just like, I don't know why you're not happy. And, you know, it, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, this has never happened in anybody else's marriage ever, but it was just like, I don't know what your problem is, right? Um, but I'm a, I'm a bit of a fighter. <laughs> things, things weren't good. And so uh, soon after, when things were obviously not going great, uh, she winds up pregnant again. And so it's just like, well, that's interesting. Okay, you know, that's, that was in the plan. So uh, we, we go on. Uh, we, she, she has, what? Hold on. What? So we, we were going to get divorced. Yeah, it was not good. It is, it is, before we were saved, it is only by God's grace and us getting pregnant that kept us from getting divorced. Um, to the extent that, like, we had to beat up our stuff. He bought the refrigerator from yeah, me. Yeah, we couldn't decide who was going to get the refrigerator, so I wrote her a check for it because, it you know. And then that weekend, we found out that we were pregnant. Yeah, it was, it was like, fine, if this is done, this is done. We're, I'm moving on because this is not, you know, this is not going well. Um, there were things going on, um, and it was just, it was, sin was rampant in our life, right? Let's just call it what it is. Um, uh, we can call it uh, uh, an alcohol addiction, we can call it um, uh, a drug addiction, we can call it fornication, we can call it adultery, we can call it whatever you want. At the end of the day, it's sin. Uh, and God sees it as one thing, and it's sin. Um, and there was, no, uh, there was no desire for the sin to be addressed. And so it got to the point where it was like, fine, if you want to go, then go. Uh, we divided this stuff up, and then she comes in and tells me she's pregnant. And so it's like, okay, well, we at least can't do this now. Um, we can't do it now. And looking back on it, it was only God's hand in our life saying, just, just stay with me. Just stay with me. Um, and so, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on, on the backstory. Um, so we, we move out of the apartment because, you know, that was not good. And um, 
we we moved back in with her her folks had uh, split up and uh, so we moved in with her dad um, because he had this huge house and it was just him and I'm like this will work out better we can get out away from uh, people and uh, that made it worse because uh, it, it just doesn't work well having two men of the house and so uh, that didn't work out well um, do you want to fill anything up to here before we move on to getting to Harrisonville um, whenever Right before we get saved is when I'll, there's just a few key things I want to share. Okay. And I'll around. So, uh, I decide, you know, we move out, it, things didn't get any better. Um, the marriage is still in turmoil, it's horrible. And the whole time I'm telling myself, there's no reason it should be like this, because all my life, anything that was broken, I could fix. If I just tried hard enough, if I just worked hard enough at it. So I'm like, there's no reason that I shouldn't be able to fix her, right? There's obviously something wrong. There's no reason that, that I shouldn't be able to, like, and that's, that was my mindset. And so it didn't work out, uh, out on the farm. And so it was like, you know what? Let's, it, obviously this marriage thing isn't working. So, you know, what's the logical thing to do? Let's go buy a house together, right? Cause that's what everybody does when it's like, we're like minutes away from like splitting up daily. It's like, you know what we should do? We should invest in a mortgage and a brand new house that, like, by God's grace, we had no right to ever get finance for. But anyway, again, it was God's providence in our life moving us uh, out of a, a bad situation. Um, so we move into uh, into town in Harrison, where we bought a house, and... Um, it was just, it was the same thing. Can you imagine that? A change of scenery really didn't change uh, the people. It didn't really change uh, the sin uh, that was going on uh, behind closed doors. And so we had some people soon after we moved to Harrisonville um, start to just invest in our life. And uh, these people uh, were Christians. I knew that. Um, but it, they just wanted to hang. They just wanted to spend time with us. And and I look back on these people, and uh, they go uh, they go to a different uh, church, and that's okay. And they have some different beliefs, but that's okay. But the one thing I did see in these people, they were different. Um, I still wanted nothing to do with the whole church thing because I didn't have time for that. Right? I worked seven days a week, but uh, they just wanted to spend time with us. And so they invested time in us uh, enough that it, I don't really know how I want to say it. Um, there were some things in Paige's life that were, you know, um, I don't know if you know the verse. Uh, that... if I just, let me just, I'll just catch you up. Okay. It might, I don't know, it might help you. It doesn't matter. Um, so, we had our oldest. We got married and um, got pregnant. I started working at this time. Um, and I told you, I grew up in a Christian home. I knew the word of God. Um, I never once in my entire life doubted the existence of God. Um, I never once doubted the fact that Jesus Christ was his son, that he purposely came to this earth, died on the cross, was buried and rose again to pay the, the penalty for our, the sins of the world. Never, ever doubted that. Always believed it my whole life. But that's just what I believe, that he died for the sins of the whole world. It wasn't that he died for you and for me. It was that he died for the sins of the whole world, and it was never, ever personal. And what God allowed to happen in my life was he allowed um, my love of self and my selfishness and my sin to become exceeding sinful. And so shortly after we got married, um, I didn't... I, I love this man more than anything <laughs> in this entire world, and he's an incredible man. But at that time in my life, I didn't love him. Um, mainly because I didn't know what love was. Um, I didn't know the love of God, and I, all I really knew was what lust was. Um, and I didn't want to marry him, but we had a kid. My parents were like, you have a kid, marry him. So I begrudgingly, and if anything, out of spite, I know that's the best reason to get married, but that's where I was at that time. Um, not long after we got married, um, I, I went to work, he was working. Um, we're a lot like uh, Brian and Angela in D2. Like, he's over here doing his thing and she's over there doing her thing. No, I'm kidding. They don't sit at the same table in D2 because they're so little. Um, 
we were merely roommates. Um, right. And I, we mentioned I was a fighter. Um, I would look for a fight. I would come home from work, and just because I didn't want to be there, I would find something to fight about so that I could leave. Um, I was <laughs> easy. <laughs> I was really, I was really um, a terrible person to live with. I was not an easy person to live with. So anyway, I went to work. Told you. Um, shortly after we got married, just a matter of months, um, there, I met a guy that I worked with, and um, I started to have an affair with him that went on for a bit. Um, and so that's, those are the key points. That, that kind of fills in, you know, it's not my story to tell, but, uh, so there was some, there was some sin going on. Um, and so we, you know, this is still going on. So the logical thing for me to do is to buy a house with this woman. Not really, but so that's where God had brought us. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I do want to get to where we're at now, but so we buy this house. Uh, we're living in Harrisonville. Uh, we had some people start uh, investing in us and just really spending time with us. And, um, you know, you don't ever know the value of just spending time with somebody, right? And, uh, it just, uh, it, they would come and they would hang out. They went to the lake with us and they would watch me, uh, drink more than any person should drink. And they would just love me through it, right? And, uh, just minister to me and, you know, looking back on it, I don't know that I would be quite as gracious, right? I, I would probably call somebody out, but anyway, God used it. And uh, through this time, um, uh, I'm trying hard, right? Because I always wanted um, to be married to her. I've always, um, I really always have been uh, head over heels for her, and, and nobody really believes that. Makes but makes me feel like a total fool. <laughs> whatever. But I really have been. And so I really wanted it to work. And if it wasn't going to work, like I said, I needed it to be on my terms, right? Because I didn't want to be that guy. And so anyway, um, I start seeing, well, I don't, I don't want to say I start seeing, um, cause I kind of want to fast forward. I came home one day, um, we'd been in Harrisonville for not too long. And I'm telling you, uh, a different person was in my house, right? It looked like her, it didn't talk like her. It didn't act like her. And all I could do was duck my head and wonder, I don't know what's going on. And I didn't, I didn't dare ask. And I'll let her circle back around. But I just know that it, in, a, in an instant, like something was different. And it was just like, I'm rolling with it, right? Um, because I don't know. And, you know, and so uh, basically what had happened was... Uh, you know, my sister uh, had given her a book for Christmas and she started reading it and uh, it was a Christian based book, right? Because, you know, it, it, that's what it was and it doesn't matter what the book was, but, and uh, she can kind of give you a testimony of how she got saved. But what had happened was, you know, she, she gave her life to Christ, basically. She, um, I'll, I'll let you get into that. You can circle back around, but I just remember there was something new. Something was different, and I didn't know what it was. Um, and so she comes to me uh, that weekend, and she says, Hey, on Saturday, you know, I'm working. Who knows what I'm doing? I'm always going 100 mile an hour somewhere, some way, some, doing something. That's just how I am. I'm always going. And she's like, Hey, I'm going to go to church tomorrow. And I'm like, All right, have fun, right? <laughs> Are you taking the boys or the boys with me? And I'm taking the boys. Okay, sounds good. All right? And so she goes to church. It was with our friends, uh, and it was clear up in the city. And we lived in Harrisonville, and she comes home, and she's talking about, it was, it was really good, and I'm like, okay, that'll wear off, you know, because that was my mindset. That, that was my mindset. It really was, and so, uh, and I'm not trying to make light of, uh, that's just the person that I was, um, completely godless. Um, it was all about me, um, and so, and whatever, that'll wear off, and so she comes back, you know, the next week. The whole time, I'm like, it's just weird, because there hasn't been any yelling, there hasn't been any fighting, there hasn't been any, and I'm just like... I don't know what's up, but, you know, I'm going to roll with it because, you know, and so she comes back the next week. She's like, hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go to church again tomorrow. And then I'm like, the light bulb comes on in my head. I'm like, I see what she's doing, right? She's trying to make me look bad. She's trying, she's trying to make me look like that guy who doesn't go to church with his family. I'm like, I already know how this is going to go. This is going to wear off, but you're not going to make me look bad in the time period. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to go with you. But I'm like, I am not going clear to the city and wasting my whole day going to church. Doesn't your mom go to church somewhere here in town, right? Her mom had just uh, started coming to Heartland. It was right after the building was built. Um, and again, it was just God's providence. So we come to church the next day. 
I'm like, I'm like a fish out of water in this place. I'm like, this is the most uncomfortable thing. Like, I went to church a couple times as a kid on, you know, Easter or whatever, because that's what you did. But this place was different. This dude up here was like yelling at me. And I'm like, did, I honestly thought somehow my wife has, through her mom, told the preacher what was going on in my life. And I'm like, I'm all mad about it. And I'm, <laughs> obviously, it's conviction. It's conviction to sin, right? And, you know, God's shining the spotlight on the sin of my life. And I remember, like, the second this thing was over, I was out the door. I'm like, I'm never coming back to this place. And all I could think about through the week was, I wonder if we're going back this week, right? <laughs> and because I was like, I don't want to go, but yet there's, like, this feeling, like, I, I think I need to go back. And so when she's like, do you want to go back? I'm like, fine, if you're going to make me, right? <laughs> So we come back again, the same thing. It's like the preacher is preaching directly at me and I'm at the same, I'm irritated, but at the same time I'm convicted of sin. And, um, the whole time I'm just frustrated, um, at, at the point I was in life, right? I had been able to do anything throughout my entire life, whatever I wanted to do, right? Uh, it didn't matter how hard it was. It didn't matter, right? Um, there, there was a time period in my life when I played baseball uh, year-round, right? I mean, it, it didn't matter. If I put my mind to something, I don't know if you know this about me, but I go 100 mile an hour at whatever I'm doing. Um, and it, like, it didn't matter what it was, but everything that was close to me was like in crumbles. And it didn't matter how hard I tried to put it back together, I couldn't. And the harder I tried, the worse it got. And my marriage was case in point, exactly what I'm talking about. And it I had no idea what the problem was. I, I, I could build houses. I could build. It didn't matter what it was. And, but I couldn't make myself the dad that I wanted to be. I couldn't make myself the husband that I thought I needed to be. And it was just like, no matter how hard I try, the worse it got. And the more I tried, it just kept pushing and pushing. And it's, it's, it's like a, an addiction in its own right. Because the more you want something to change, the harder it is for it to change. Because you have no control over it right? And it's, it's simply, it, it, that's just how it was. And it didn't matter how hard I wanted. So when I came and there was conviction to sin and it was just like, I don't know, maybe this is something that I need, but I, I don't, I don't know. And so this went on for several weeks. We would come on Sunday and I was convicted and there's so many things going on in my life. There's this new woman living in my house and we still haven't talked about what's going on because I think there's some you know, like sham behind it. I don't know. Um, and I was at baseball practice. Uh, I was coaching my nephew's baseball team. It was on a Wednesday night. Um, and I remember uh, looking at my brother and telling him, I got to go, right? And he's like, what do you mean? Practice? I'm like, I got to go. And so I, 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 leave, uh, I leave the ball practice. I come to church. My wife is here. She has no idea I'm coming. It was on a Wednesday night. Um, I sat in the back, and I don't even remember, right? Normally, on Wednesday nights, like a Bible study, but I don't know. Brian's up here preaching, like, at me again, and, like, I'm super convicted, and I left before it was even over, um, and I left, and this was back before, you know, it was back when you could just jump on the highway right out here. You know, you didn't have to go up by, you know, what wasn't even Sap Brothers, but, and I remember, instead of just jumping on the highway like I normally would, because it's easy, I took a left like you have to do now, and I'm up there at the stop sign by the Walmart distribution center. And I'm sitting in my truck at this stop sign, and obviously you couldn't do this now because there's traffic all the time, but it wasn't like that then because you could get on the highway. And I remember sitting at that stop sign, I don't know for how long, but just completely breaking down because, and I was, I was mad. I was mad at, at God because I'm like, if you're so good, and that's what everybody keeps telling me, then why is everything in my life just in, in crumbles, right? If, if you're as good as they say you are, and you can do all the things that you say you can do, then why aren't you helping me out a little bit here, right? If you're trying to draw me to you, right, then, then what, how in the world is it this, right? And I remember I sat there and I, an outward conversation. And if you don't know me, I really don't talk a lot. Most people around here think that I talk a lot and my wife doesn't. It's actually the complete opposite, but it's just the role that we have here at the church. But it was an outward conversation. I was mad and I was broken. And I remember sitting there and finally just coming to the point when, and and, and I, I, I said this to my steering wheel, fine, God, if you want it, you can have it, but you've got to take all of it. Right. And I remember just being, you can have it all, right? 
but I'm not trying anymore. I'm not trying to make my marriage better. I'm not trying to be a better father. I'm not trying to do all this anymore. I'm not going to, because if you are as God as they say you are, then you're going to do it for me. And I'm just going to be a part of it. And I'll do whatever you want me to do. But if you want it, you're getting all of it. And I, I just broke down. And I had no idea at the time what had happened in my life, right? Some people know, you know, that you've got to pray to get saved. And I'm telling you, that was the point in my life where I gave my life to Christ, right? Where it wasn't about me anymore. It was about him. I knew nothing, right? I didn't know who Jonah was. I didn't know who Noah was. I know none of that, right? I, it, none of this stuff. I knew none of it. But I just knew that that God was convicting me of all the things that I knew I ought not be doing, right? And I knew that if he, um, it, it, they kept telling me if I would just put my faith in him, that, that he would take a life that was just in crumbles and he would do something with it. And I was just like, fine, if you want it, you can have it. But man, you're getting it. And, and, you know, just like I do everything else in life, I don't do things halfway. So when I, when I jumped on board, I'm like, okay, fine, here we go, right? And so, Soon afterwards, we kind of have the conversation of like, okay, let's get involved in this church thing, right? Uh, and soon afterwards, uh, this was early spring, uh, they start talking about this marriage conference. And I'm like, I don't know nothing about a marriage conference. I don't, that's not my thing, right? I don't like people. I don't like being around people. Still to this day, I don't really love groups of people. It's just me, right? Um, like, I, I, I hate the whole COVID thing, but the one good thing that's come out of it is like people stay out of my bubble now. And it's like, <laughs> man, I... It's like the one good thing that's come out of this whole thing, right? That's just me, right? And, uh, but I remember signing us up for this marriage thing, right? Without even asking her. And then, so I told her, I'm like, maybe I should ask her about that. So I'm like, I'm going to do this, you know, the back door. I'm like, hey, is that something you might want to do? And she's like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, okay, good, because I signed us up, right? <laughs> So we go, and uh, I've been to a lot of these marriage conferences and different things, but um, I remember Mike Blake was, was, was there, and he, he, he taught on uh, the will of God for your marriage, right? And just the fact, and I'm like, the will of God for my marriage? I don't know, the, I don't know what the will of God is for my life, right? To, and then to know that there's a will for or my marriage, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wow, she, I mean, I thought she was bad, but I was bad, right? And it starts like revealing light to all the things that I didn't think were that bad in my life, and it, it took a while. You know, some people, when they, when they get saved, like, they, they drop all of their sin instantly, right? Uh, they drop all of their habits instantly. Uh, I was the opposite, right? Uh, I was the guy who, um, I remember the first year, and maybe I shouldn't say this, I don't know, but I remember uh, the first Easter we were here, uh, I, I was at the bar the night before because I didn't know you weren't supposed to do that, right? Nobody told me. And I remember sitting here completely hungover, but I knew that I was supposed to be here, right? And it was over that first year that I realized, oh, these are things that, you know, these aren't godly things. And so God worked those things out in my life over time. I never willingly did something that I knew I ought, I mean, not just out egregious. You know, we all do things we probably know we ought not to do. But, you know, it, it, was, the, it was the simple fact and the one thing that I wanted to work more than anything was my marriage, Right. And I was like, God, if you can fix my marriage, I know you can fix anything. And then, you know, some people are like, you know, God healed our marriage, you know, but it took time. I'm telling you, God healed my marriage in an instant. And you might not believe me, but I am telling you, it went from darkness to light in an instant. This woman has been the best woman to be married to from that day being moving forward. There is, I'm not lying to you. And so I'm telling you that, and, and I know you're thinking the like, okay, this is marriage. I'm not having marriage problems, whatever. It doesn't matter what your issue is in life. Whatever it is you're hung up on, it can be changed in an instant, right? And in, in just, in, just like that. And so is there anything you want to catch up on before? I want, to, I want to talk about what God's done since then, because that's the good stuff to me, right? That other stuff is just stuff. I mean, it's awesome that he healed our marriage, but... Yeah, so since we're talking about marriage, because um, our marriage was a key component in my salvation, um, my sister-in-law had gotten me this book, and January 1st, everybody makes their resolution. So I'm like, all right, this is my new resolution. I'm going to read a chapter a day. And it, was, and it was set up like that. It was like a devotional book, probably five minutes of reading. But what this book did um, was it caused me to open God's Word. Like that was a part of reading this book. Uh, mainly because they didn't use King James verses. And um, I was lost as a ball in tall grass, but I knew that the King James Bible was what I needed to read. 
And so I opened up my Bible, and I would read the verses out of my Bible instead of this book. And then that got me starting to cross-reference things, and God's Word really started coming to life um, for me. Now, I was out of our marriage. At that point, I mean, we lived together. Yeah, she we was checked out. Roommates. I was checked out. We were the epitome of broken. Um, there was there was no no earthly power that could have saved our marriage. Um, and so I'm reading this book. The Word of God is coming to life inside of me now. I was raised in church. I have a wealth of the Word of God within me. I just never listened, you know, never listened, never obeyed, never applied it to my life. And so I'm reading the Bible. It's coming to life. And the first thing that God addresses with me is, really, who are you living for? Are you truly living for me and my glory? Or are you living for you and your glory? And that was, that was the moment that my sin was opened to my, like my eyes were opened to my own sin. That was the moment that I was like, oh my gosh, my entire life, everything I've ever done has been about me and for me. And you're just my crutch. You're my band-aid. You're my, you're my label. You're not really my God. You're not my Lord. Um, and you're definitely not my savior. And so it was in that moment, it was like 11 o'clock at night. I'm reading, he's asleep. I'm in bed. And that I came to that realization. And that was, that was the first time in my life that I had ever confessed my sin um, as an offense against the holy creator God. And so I repented of my sins. I begged Jesus Christ to come into my heart and to save me. And he did in, in a moment. So then my first prayer, three seconds after I get saved, after the spirit of God makes me alive, I asked him, I was like, well... I want to leave. Um, you know, I've got this other really great guy. I was like, well, since I'm supposed to live for you and my life is supposed to be all about you, who do you choose for me? That was literally my question. Who do you choose for me? And just like that, and within, you know, the spirit of God within me said, you're already married to him. That's my choice for you. You're married. And so in that moment, I said, yes, Lord. And my affair of a couple years was done. It was over. It was gone. Um, I still think I had something to do with it. <laughs> because it was different. Now, my choices weren't, they weren't about him. They weren't for him. They were for God, who was perfect and holy and just. And so I knew that if that was his choice for me, it couldn't be wrong. Um, clearly, I was not making wise choices. So I was just going to go with what God chose for me. And the rest is pretty well. Whatever... We had been coming to church, um, and then we kept coming to church, and it was like, oh, he keeps coming. And uh, I had been reading about this marriage conference, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's what we need. We have got to go to this marriage retreat conference, whatever. I was like, we, we need, I need help. And, uh, but I was like, he would never, in a million years, never. So that was like one of my first prayers, was like, can you somehow get us there? Like, you're making all the choices now. Like, you're calling the shots. I'm following you. So can you just get us there? And so whenever he said that, we're sitting right over there. And he's like, hey, what do you think about that? Would you want to go? And I was just like, oh, seriously? Like, is this going to happen? So we both get saved. Um, and I, I honestly don't think, I mean, we would have grown. When you get saved, the, the Holy Spirit indwells you, right? You have uh, a new person calling the shots, but you still struggle with making the right choices day in and day out, right? And so uh, one of the, uh, like I said, when we do something, uh, we go at it as fast as we can. So I keep hearing about this discipleship thing, right? And I'm like, okay, that sounds like something we need to do, right? So we get, um, we get into D1 and the word of God just like starts blowing up in my mind, right? I can't get this stuff fast enough, you know, I'm not a student at all. Um, you can ask Steve. Uh, it was only by the grace of God that they helped me get through HBI because I'm not a student. But man, the Word of God was um, was just amazing. And it, like I couldn't get enough of it. I couldn't wait to go back. Right? We were there. And we were like wanting to meet as often as we could because it was just like stuff that I had never even heard before. Right? And he's like, yeah, you know that story about that. I'm like, I don't know that story about no guy. So you're going to have to tell me. Right? And it was just, it was really cool. And, you know, Paige is learning uh, along the way as well. Just she already knew a lot of the basic stuff. But it was through uh, discipleship and, and you know it, the word of God really coming uh, to life you know inside of me and so 
from the day that I got saved moving forward, I'm like, God, whatever you want me to do, right? Uh, I found that verse, faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it, right? And like, if you've called me to do it, then you're going to get me through it, right? And so no matter what it was, and so we've just always like, what's next? What's next? I just want to be where God wants me to be, right? And so it didn't matter if it was, uh, we went through D1 very quickly, so quickly, in fact, that they actually asked us to kind of shadow them as they discipled their next people, because I think they wanted to make sure we kind of just got it again, um, <laughs> And, uh, and so we went and we, we jumped into D2 because I'm like, I can't get enough of just what's going on in this book and how it's just changed in my life. And I'm in the word and, you know, it was, I, I remember, uh, several, not several years, it hasn't been that many years, but, um, you know, I felt called that it's like I couldn't get enough of it, right? And I felt called that, uh, I should jump into, uh, the Bible, HBI, the Bible Institute, and I'm like, I don't know that that's for me. And I really had to debate this thing with God. And he was just like, I've called you to it. You know, and the, the first year I was in HBI, I was working, uh, average between 80 and 90 hours every week. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was rough. Plus it was the first, it was the first year that we had HBI here at Heartland. So, uh, the only thing that the instructors knew at the time was we want to make sure we've got lots of homework, right? That's what it seemed like. <laughs> Not really, but so it was, it was hard, but, and, and it was still, it was that, it was that verse, faithful is he who called you. Also, I'm like, God, you called me to do this. Like I wanted to quit. I, I don't know how many times I went to my wife and I'm like, this isn't for me, right? I can serve God and I don't need this. And she was like, did God ask you to do it? Did God tell you to do it? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, why are you asking me then? And I'm like, why do you have to be so biblical all the time, right? And <laughs> like, can't you? <laughs> and it just didn't matter what it was. And, you know, uh, we signed up for our first uh, international missions trip uh, without a dime to our name. And it was just like, God, if you want us to go, we're going to go. And uh, we had a friend um, show up like two days later. And they were like, hey, I heard you were going on this trip. Uh, I want to pay for it. And I'm like, you want to do what? Like, we hadn't told anybody. And it was just like, it was things like that. When you just take a step of faith, man, it's just a step. And I don't know where y'all are at in, in your walk, but whatever it is, if you just take a step, um, man, God will just, he'll just do it, right? And so it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, so we've, it's just, you just get on board with what he's doing. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to be super good at anything because I'm not super good at anything, right? But you just, you just go and God just uses you. And it doesn't matter what it is, um, that, that we've put our hands on. God has just made it just blossom. It doesn't matter what it is. And so, you know, we've been to London three different times. There was a time in our life that, um, I thought God was moving us to London permanently. And, you know, the, the door kind of closed on that and, and there's just been, you know, I've been to India uh, twice, I've been to Nepal twice, and just all these different things, p- things that I never would have dreamed. Like any of these things, if you would have told me the day that I got saved, hey, um, these are the things that are going to happen. I would have been like, you're absolutely out of your ever-loving mind. I don't like people. I don't like this is. And so as you just take a step for God, he will open the door. And you might think there's no way I could ever do that. If you would have told me that, hey, uh, Jason, in 10 years or 12 years or however many years it's been, you know, you're going to be uh, a pastor and you're going to be uh, teaching these different things. I'd be like, I don't even know anything and I don't want to do it anyway. Right. And so it's just just simply taking whatever step of faith that it is to just get that much closer to God. I remember uh, a vision conference um, and Doug Howie was here preaching and he was preaching on Joshua and Caleb. And I don't remember the exact uh, context, you know, but Joshua and Caleb and, you know, they're the they're the two spies that are willing to just go. They, they go into the land and they're like, man, look at this fruit. It's so big. We got to carry it on our shoulders. And, you know, the other 10 are like, man, but do you see how big, big the enemy is? Man, we, there's no way we can do it. And I remember that vision conference and he was just he was pounding this thing out. And it was like on a Tuesday night. Um, and it was it was uh you know, there's not a lot of people here on a Tuesday night uh, for, for the vision conference, but I remember sitting in and we were, I, I remember just bowing my head. And, you know, you hear people say this and it's like, that doesn't really happen. But I remember bowing my head right there in the middle of what this dude's preaching and telling God again, right? Because it's always been about God. Everything that I've done since then, since I got saved, was like, God, if I had given him what I thought was everything, but I still had reservations, Right. I still was not willing to sacrifice my family. Like, it didn't matter what it was. Um, there were still things that I didn't 
I didn't want to get in the way of, right? And so uh, I remember just like laying it down and saying, God, it doesn't matter what you call me to do. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll do it, right? If you want me uh, to get trained up in this Bible Institute, right? Uh, The last thing I want to do is uh, be called to the mission field someday and then be like, okay, God, hang on four years so I can go get trained up to do it. I was like, fine, if it's available, why not do it? And so I remember telling, I, I say telling God, right? Uh, I'm sure God does a lot more telling of me than anything. But I remember having this conversation. It's like, whatever you want me to do, God, I don't care if you want me to sell everything that I've got. I'll go anywhere you want me to go, right? And I still, to this day, have that feeling. It's terrifying, actually, because, you know, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Um, there's, there's probably a reason that uh, we had kids so early, because who knows what God's going to do in our lives, you know, here in Everybody keeps saying, what are you going to do when all your kids move out? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm still not that old. but We're we're young. But, you know, I don't know. But I'm telling you, if if you're just faithful, right, and and you you think that you're just an average, you're just an average dude. That's just me. That's my testimony. I'm just a dude, right? There is nothing special about me. Absolutely nothing, right? other than the fact that the God of the universe lives inside of me and anything that he tells me to do, I'm going to do, right? And, and everything that I do, he blesses. Now, I'm not going to say there's been things in my life that have not been so great, but he allows you to go through trials. He allows things like that to happen. And so I guess the, the thing that I, I want you to get more than anything is, man, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. Man, you just got to lay it down. Right? And I'm assuming that, that you guys all know that, right? But it doesn't matter how broken you are. And it, you can't fix it. I'm, I'm testimony to that. It doesn't matter how hard you try. You can't, right? And it wasn't until I was just like, fine, you can have it, right? And, and then it was just in an instant, right? And then you get like those sweet kisses from God at time where it's just like, okay, that makes sense, right? You know, and I remember soon after I got saved, um, some of you guys know my brother. His, his name is Brad. He's uh, since been sent to, to pastor the church in, in Clinton, right? And, but I remember soon after I got saved thinking, wow, this is really awesome what God had de- did in my life. Like, he changed my heart. Um, and I remember thinking, you know, you, I'm sure at some point in your life you thought, man, I really wish this person would get saved, right? It's really cool that I got saved, but there's like no way that person will get saved. They're just like... I, I was an angel compared to my brother, man. He, and you can tell him that, right? This, like, he was, he was seven different kinds of bad all the time, right? But I loved my brother to death. And it was just like, I would do anything for him. And it was just like, I remember thinking, man, God, I know you can save me, but, you know, you ain't never, I just don't think you can. And, like, within a month, he was saved. And it was just, you know, I, can, I could go through how it happened, but it was just like, those are the sweet kisses from God that are just like, you know, I have, I have no control over this thing. I have no say in this thing, right? I'm just simply along for the ride. And as soon as you kind of come to that realization in your Christian walk that you don't really control, you get to decide right from wrong, right? Uh, we live in this bag of bones, right? Uh, but we have a different spirit inside, we still get to make the decisions, right? But as soon as you finally decide that you just let God do it all and you're just a part of it and it's like, where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to do today? Who do you want to talk to today? Then it's, it's a lot more freeing in life and it's a lot more enjoyable. It, it, it allows your relationships to be better, right? And so I went from the guy who knew nothing about the Bible and wanted nothing to do with church ever. Man, the churches were wicked in my eyes. And and now here I am. Um, we're discipling people, and there's nothing I like to do more than sit down at the kitchen table and disciple people. And we've discipled some of the, the sweetest couples, and it's just, I don't know. The fact that God would use you, I don't know. <laughs> you can't do that. <clears throat> um, that's actually what you just said is what I was sitting here thinking. If there's anything that I would say is that um, as a human being, the only thing I can do is read God's word and obey God's word. And in doing that simple thing and having faith that God is who he says he is, um, he has taken us around the world multiple times. I don't know if you guys know where Archie is, but I grew up in Archie. <laughs> There's like less than a thousand people that live in Archie. And as far as I was concerned, I never needed to leave Archie. And um, we have gotten to travel 
halfway around the world a couple different times. And it's and all been for the glory of God. It, yeah, it's all like that's where God's word has taken us. Um, but the sweetest of those places that God has taken us is to our kitchen table to sit down and open up the word of God with another individual or another couple and to just take everything that he's given us, everything that he's taught us, everything that he's allowed us to do and, and be and learn and just pour that out to somebody else and then watch God do all of those things in their life. And it's, it is incredible that he would just use, I mean, we were so broken and so screwed up and I mean, we, we still are, but um, he still uses us and it's so humbling. Like God is just so good and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Don't ever, don't ever tell yourself that it's like I'm, I'm too washed up. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. God, God can't use me. Like I'm just, I'm just like, it's okay to come to the church and be like, you know, I need, I need to be the one who's, who's, who's getting some of this. But at some point you have to, you have to get over, I mean, and don't take this Sometimes I say things I ought not say, but don't. Uh, some, you need to get over yourself and just realize that. Guess what? It's not about you, and uh, it really has nothing to do. It, it, God, in spite of me, uses me for different things. And so, don't ever think that you're not enough to talk to somebody. You're not enough to do X, Y, or Z. You just don't ever know, right? Because at the end of the day, you're not enough, but He inside of you is. And so, if He's telling you, "Hey, go say something." Or, hey, you know what? I, I want to learn how to disciple somebody. I want to learn how to, whatever it is, man. You just, whatever. I just, like, you tell me what to do and I'll do it. Man, we started in the nursery and it's just like, whatever. It just get in line somewhere and serve. You know, I never wanted to be anything and I still don't want to be anything. It kind of, the, 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 the pastor title kind of rubs me wrong sometimes because I'm like, I'm just a dude, right? Um, I, I'm not ordained. I'm not in any of those things. Like, I'm just a guy who is in love uh, with the book, right? And I don't have my Bible. I always do, but I'm just a guy who's in love with this book and I'm just going to read it and I'm going to do it. And people are like, what, what's, what people do ask? Like, how did you manage to get from where you are to, you know, where you were to where you are? And I'll just boil it down to this. It is just simple obedience. But people don't want to be obedient. Man, it, that's just what it is. It is just simple obedience. Like, you want to know why you're struggling? Because you know right from wrong. It's because you don't want to be obedient. You know, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is in your life that you're struggling with, being a parent, right? Being a, a, a wife or a husband or, you know, just making personal decisions, right, with sin or whatnot. You want to know why you struggle? Because you're not obedient, right? And there could be trials, there could be temptations, but at the end of the day, that's, it, you, you just simply, just be obedient. And you know what? Ask God for grace for the times that you're like, wow, I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to be at the bar the night before church, right? You know, you just ask, I'm like, okay, I'm, okay, good to know. I'm not going to do that anymore, right? You know, learn from what you do and, and just move on. And so it doesn't take anybody special. Just get on board with what God's doing and... I'm telling you, it's amazing. And so I don't really have, there's a lot of things that could be said, but, you know, everything that happens in our life is just for the glory of God. So, you know, that really should be everybody's testimony. So that's all I got. You got anything? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know how to make sure. Yeah. I think something was said there for everybody tonight, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. I think we all... Uh... Hey, Dale, can, can you put up uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. Um, I do appreciate both of your, uh, just your transparency. That we, we all lived with you. Uh, we, we, you communicated very well, both of you. So thank you for la- letting us see... Uh, Inside your lives, and Jason, you commented just your pride, but you, uh, you're not that guy. You're humble. It, we could all tell that you're uh, humble. And so uh, thank you for your obedience. But in, uh, <clears throat> I, 
I don't think I'll ever look at the... You know, we all, when we leave church, if you're going to Harrisonville, we'll, we're all going to stop at that stop sign. And <laughs> that, that's going to be holy ground now, Jason. Jason got saved at this stop sign right up here. I, I picture that. That, that, is, that was really sweet. And uh, so... Um, What's that? Yeah, yeah, he can't sit there for an hour anymore. Uh, uh, anyway, this is just one of the verses I was thinking of um, to maybe close tonight. This one and the next one. Uh, for by grace are you saved through faith. And, you know, both of these guys mentioned some baggage. And, you know, everybody in here has a past. And... For the most part, it should stay in the past. It, we don't need to keep reliving those things. But uh, <clears throat> it took grace, in other words, unmerited favor for these two to come to the Lord, to come to, w- with Jason, what I got was he kind of had to come to the end of himself. Like, I can't try hard enough. I'm not smart enough. I can't make enough money. I'm tired. I, you know, you get to the end of yourself by because of pride, because it it is an empty uh, path ahead. I mean, that was that was the devil's sin. He he fell. He was lifted up by pride, and he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And so, uh, anyway, just the marriage conflict, uh, the affair whatever it broke it wasn't working and what they were trying and so uh the lord intervened and saved them but but it takes faith it says you're saved by grace yes but it's through faith and so i want to point out three things here that we all need we need faith uh uh god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth we have to believe in him uh and we won't perish, but we'll have everlasting life. So it's through faith. And faith cometh by hearing, and in hearing uh, by the Word of God. So it takes the Word of God. Uh, Paige mentioned she's reading this book that caused her to read the Bible. Jason is hearing the preaching. He's hearing the Word of God. And he begins to believe. And it says, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And so... Uh, so faith is the element. And uh, go on to the next verse there. Uh, I want us to see these other two things. It's not of works. So uh, it's by grace that you're saved through faith and not of yourself. So you can't save yourself. It, it's not of works. It, and, and that's kind of my testimony. Paige, you mentioned your family was uh, a very moral family. And... Uh, you, you think of me as what maybe a pastor should look like, but I came from a very moral upbringing. Don't lie, don't go to bad movies, don't smoke, don't drink, don't sleep around. And so I'm always walking this fence. I don't enjoy sitting because I know it's wrong, but I don't have a piece of past this understanding. I don't have the Lord in my life. <clears throat> uh, and you can't work for it. So that was, I had to come to the end of myself as well. So th- keep that in mind. Uh, Jason and Paige are discipling, they're, they're teaching the Word of God not to become saved, but because they are saved. So they're, they're not working to earn merit with God, they're working for the Lord because they are saved. And then it says, lest any man should boast. And, and that's a key little phrase there, because men are notorious. The, you know, when I grew up, we had maps. We didn't have GPS, we had maps. <laughs> And it's just kind of a running joke that men do not want to stop and ask for directions <laughs> because we're prideful. But it's very humbling to ask for help. And uh, it's humbling to come here to a recovery group because we're saying we need help. So good. You, you humbled. You. If, if you're, you know, you know, still 21 and bulletproof, then you haven't learned that lesson yet. You're still boasting. But so the three things is faith. We have to believe. And we also have to say it's not of works. We can't work. I I tried that. And I could compare works with 
most anybody except maybe Paul here, he, and Paul couldn't work. He had to be stricken and blinded. And, and the third thing is humility. Just faith, no works, and humility, God will save you. And, and so uh, we're getting ready to go to Mazio's tonight, but uh, I just kind of wanted to leave us with those three things. Let's just bow our heads in a time of prayer and uh, with nobody looking around, would anybody just raise their hand and say, you know, Steve, pray for me. I, I am struggling. Just uh, things that were said tonight that pricked our heart. I, I see almost half of us have raised hands that we we just want prayer. Uh, maybe something uh, Paige or uh, Jason said, just even about obedience. That That's something I'm... I'm um, I'm, I'm praying about even in my own life, just uh, the matter of obedience. And so I was just thankful Jason said that. But um, start with these three, three things here, just the faith. Um, we, we all know we've got a past and uh, our way hasn't worked. And, and uh, we've, we've, the Bible says that all of sin and come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> and it says that, uh, the Bible says that the wages of sin, because we are sinners, we have earned, we have merited death. The wages of sin is death, <clears throat> but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We, we have to believe in Jesus Christ. He paid our penalty. The, the thing that we deserve, the death that we deserve, it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took our place. He paid our penalty. <clears throat> and uh, But the, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and the night I was saved in 1992, uh, the person asked me, would you like that gift? And, and I was so ready for that gift. Uh, just like Jason uh, sitting at this stop sign and just like Paige reading that book. And uh, I cried out to the Lord from uh, Peculiar, Missouri. I, I asked the Lord, this. I wanted this gift of eternal life because I was dying inside. And and uh, the Lord came into my life uh, just like he said he would. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I, I did that. I took God at his word and he saved me. And tonight I'm just going to pray a prayer like I prayed back then. And if it's your desire to be saved, if it's your desire to uh, <clears throat> stop working, leave your pride at the altar, so to speak, and just believe that Jesus Christ not only died for the sins of the world, but He died for you. And He rose again three days later, and He's alive tonight. And He's uh, just tugging at your heartstrings, and He's knocking at the door, and He's not wanting to come in. And, and so we have to decide to let Him in. And, and the way I did it, I prayed uh, pretty much a sample prayer, uh, maybe not quite like Jason did, but I, I just... I'm just going to pray something like I prayed that night. And if it's your desire to be saved and you want to just cry out to the Lord right now, you can do that. Just say something like this. Just, dear Lord, I, I am I'm a sinner. I, I'm sorry for my sins. And by faith tonight, I believe that Jesus Christ loves me. He died for me. And I repent of my sin. I turn to Him and from the world. I surrender my life to you right now. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it by, by your grace. Please forgive me. Please uh, change me. I am sorry and I surrender all. I, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you uh, prayed with me, uh, just keep your eyes shut one more, more moment. Let me just... Uh, pray for you. Did anybody pray with me tonight? Just raise your hand. Did anybody pray with me to be saved tonight? I don't. I don't see any hands right now. <laughs> but uh, let me just pray for those that did raise their hands earlier. They're maybe struggling. Just uh, Father, I come to you in prayer and just to ask you to dismiss us tonight with your blessing. I pray for the pizza we're going to eat tonight. I pray your blessing on it and the cake and the good fellowship. I pray. Uh, Father, your blessing on Jason and Pate. I thank you for just uh, giving them the grace to pour their heart out tonight and just their passion they have for you. It's it's contagious. And uh, I'm just really glad I came tonight and to, to hear this. And so, Lord, pray your blessing on them and, and their boys and 
They didn't really talk about Hallie, but I just uh, pray for that young lady to uh, be uh, nurtured up in the admonition of you and just to bless the McGuire home and <clears throat> lead them and guide them uh, wherever you'd have them to go. And so uh, <clears throat> bless, bless us now as we leave and uh, pray for uh, Dave and anybody, uh, maybe Travis that hadn't been here for a little bit. Just uh, pray you'll work in their lives and I pray that they will have uh, sensed your presence here and uh, pray that everybody will uh, leave here with something. So, Father, uh, bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, you are dismissed and uh, we'll just meet up there in about 15 or 20 minutes after we all get out of here. Oh, we're signing off on uh, Facebook, so thank you for joining us uh, on Facebook. Thank you, Steve.